Hello folks, Monday Man here again, and we've got the Jeep Patriot, the 2010 model, up on stands, and today we're going to go after the front brakes. They've got probably 100,000 kilometers on them, or 60,000 miles, and they are due, or maybe even overdue. We've got our parts laid out here, a pair of rotors and a set of pads. And in this case, I'm going to change the rotors regardless. They're not warped or anything, or not showing a lot of wear, but I found for the price, it's just as easy to change out the rotors so that you've got a good set with your new brake pads instead of trying to wear in brake pads on old rotors. If you want to save the money though, and you're not getting pedal pulsation, you could probably get away with uh, using the old rotors and maybe even get them uh, turned or machined so that uh, any wear is taken off them, but generally it seems just as cheap to get uh, new rotors. Well, there's nothing stopping us from doing this job except the lack of motivation, but it needs to be done. So, uh, let's get at it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is take out the caliper bolts. These hold the caliper on to the, the main bracket. bolts a little wore out on the head so hopefully we don't round it off probably just years of corrosion so I'm just gonna Tap that on there, may never get it off again. Not completely rounded off. Now let's try the magic helper. Come on, just won't break free. Well, my friends, I got that mother out. I kept rounding it and rounding it, and it took until I could bang on a half inch socket that would stay on there. May not have that stock socket anymore, but. What a job. Go into a job thinking it's going to be easy, that might be your first mistake. That caliper bolt was pretty good. Now I gotta find a new one. Okay, we'll just pop the caliper off of there. I'm gonna set it up above and behind. I don't have proper hangers, but you could use a coat hanger or something to hang it up there. Let's take the pads off and see how they look. Well, by the look of this side, not too bad. There's still some meat on those. They're not uh, uh, riveted, so there was no chance of any, um, you know, damage to the rotor. But I'm going to change them out anyways. Maybe the inside one is worse, which means there's a problem with the uh, brake pad sticking. Actually, that one wore the same too, so... But regardless, we got it apart. Let's change out the uh, rotor as well. 
Now to change the rotor you got to take off the caliper mounting bracket and hopefully I don't have the same problem as I did with the uh, caliper bolt. Caliper bracket bolt is an 18 mil. Now, in all their wisdom, there's the uh, strut bolt right there, so you can't get your socket in there without an extension. And you lose some leverage because of that. There we go. So many things want to fight me here today. There we go. And that's the caliper bracket. I'm going to replace these retainer uh, guides here. They help the pads slide along there smoothly. And the uh, pads that I bought came with new uh, hardware. So I'm just going to pop the old ones out. Like that. So this was the clip that came out of this side. And this was the clip that came out of this side. Now once you have the the caliper bracket off, you should be able to just slide the old rotor off. Good time to check your hub. I've had no problem with it and uh, was checking before to make sure there was no looseness on it. It's probably easier to check when you got a tire on it. But Okay, we got our new rotors here. These are the Bendix PRT 5706 for the Jeep Patriot. And they may be similar for the compass, but just make sure you check your uh, um, specifications to meet your application. One thing about brakes is you want to keep them clean. They came with some kind of coating on them, I think, to keep them from rusting. So let's just put some brake clean on that. Clean it up. Both sides. Brake clean, one of the best degreasers. Some people claim it's corrosive, but I think if you keep soaking things in brake clean, it might be a problem. Okay, we're gonna take the cloth. And I'm wearing gloves now, just to try and keep any of my dirty hand stuff off of them. You may have to do this a couple times. And one thing you should do is check that you got the right parts too. So I'm going to lay my old rotor gently on top and make sure they're the same diameter, which they are. And it appears, just by looking down, the bolt holes line up too, which we're going to find out in a second when we put it back on. A bit of crud on there from doing that, but I'm going to just clean it off again. Now, on the caliper bracket, you have those tabs that are guides that go into the grooves on the uh, bracket itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind, put my uh, wire wheel that's on my grinder in there and clean them up and hopefully I don't come back with bleeding cheeks from wires flying all over the place. Okay so we cleaned out the guide area. You could use a wire brush as well. I used, like I said, I used the uh, the wheel on my grinder which only stabbed me in the chest about six times so that's not too bad and I'm just going to put these new guides in which came with the pads in the way the old ones came out one in that way and it looks like the guides doesn't matter if they're the front or the back are the same so you can see there I've got my guides in now I like to use this ceramic brake lubricant 
and I painted inside the uh, guides so that and this is a high heat so it doesn't uh, cause any grease uh, melting in high or hard braking conditions and then that way when you put your pads in they have some nice uh, high heat grease to slide on so that they don't bind up over time and that's how your brake pads will look inside once you got your got them inside uh, the caliper and the caliper is mounted back on now we're going to put the rotor back on and then the caliper bracket i like to put a bit of anti-seize or the ceramic brake uh, lubricant in behind the rotor um, back in there so it doesn't stick to the hub that way you don't have any uh, seized on rotor if you've ever got to do a bearing in one of these things so that lined up just perfectly okay I like to spin a lug nut on here just to keep the rotor in place while you're putting the caliper bracket on just stops it from moving around while you're getting this bracket in place those went on nicely we'll tighten up again with our number 18 mill socket And we're going to torque these to 80 foot pounds. Now, to get the caliper piston in, I like to use the old brake pad and I just set it in and then I use a C-clamp to uh, push back on that pad to push the piston back in. Now there's tools you can buy to do this job as well, but I find this works just as well. You just slowly crank in on your C-clamp and that pushes the piston back in and it's pushing the fluid back through the line and up into the master cylinder and then this gives you enough room to get your caliper back on with the new brake pads in it there we go okay I put a bit of uh, lube on the end of my brake pad tabs or guides and we will slide them into the new caliper guides like that that's the back one I've got some lube on the front one they just sit in there like that so you can see them lined up in there new rotor pad pad now we'll put the caliper on now I'm going to coat my caliper bolts with some of the same grease. Just making sure they're not wore out. They look okay. I do have to replace one that I stripped off though. Hopefully it's not too hard to get one. So let's just take some more of our luby lube here. Bolt number one, bolt number two. I'm also going to put a little bit on the back of the brake pad so that the piston does not seize onto that pad either. And a little bit on the front pad too, where the arms that hold the uh, 
pads in sit. Okay, let's slide the caliper back on. Gave it a bit of an attitude adjustment there. Caliper bolt. Make sure the rubber cups are lined up too when you're putting your bolt in. Just give it a bit of a push up there so we can align the bolt hole. Let's get the bottom caliper bolt in. Now the uh, caliper uh, guide pins will get torqued down to 30 foot-pounds. Okay, with all of my messing around here, I did get some greasy fingerprints on the rotor, so I'm just going to spray some more brake clean on there and clean it up a bit. For the back side, I'm just going to spray my cloth and then run it in behind and get as much of the, the fingerprints off as I can. Now, don't forget to take your lug nut off of here that you put on to stabilize your rotor, or else you'll be wondering why you can't get your wheel back on. Now let's work on the driver's side. It's the exact same process, just on the opposite side of the car. Go figure. One thing I didn't show on the other side is you want to uh, clean off this hub surface area as well so that the caliper fits on there nicely. I'm just going to take some steel wool. It would be nice to have one of those air wire wheels or whatever, but I don't have one. So we'll just clean that off, clean the hub off, and we'll spray some brake clean on there. And then we'll also put some of the ceramic uh, lubricant there.
Okay, we get the driver's side back together. Take off my lug nuts so I don't forget about them. So that's the driver's side. That's the passenger side. Now we're going to go into the vehicle and pump the pedal a bit because of why pushing in the, uh, the pistons on the calipers, we need to set them back up again because they're probably in too far for the pads to clamp onto the rotor. So we'll just pump up the brakes a bit. Now you will feel a lot of pedal travel, but that's fine. And we've got a good solid brake pedal now after pumping that up. Okay, let's get the front wheels back on and take it for a test drive. Generally you like to do a couple harsh stops and then some moderate stops just to set up the pads. Uh, and then it just kind of merges the new brake pads with the new rotor. Now I like to put a little bit of the ceramic lube behind the wheel on the rotor. And you might say, well, that seems crazy. Well, it's not, because if you've ever been at the side of the road with a flat tire and can't get the wheel off because it's uh, merged itself with the uh, rotor, you'll thank me for this little tip. Before I uh, put the wheel on, I'm going to lube up some of these uh, front end bolts. Because I need to replace the stabilizer bushings. I don't know if you can see in there. It's kind of collapsed on itself. But then I also noticed that the control arm bushings are shot as well. And gee, guess what? Tie rod ends are getting a little loose. So I'm going to lube up all those bolts because I'm going to have to uh, take all of this apart uh, in another video. And uh, then I'll put the wheel back on after I've got a sufficient amount of penetrating oil on these to hopefully uh, make it easier. Now these wheels need to be torqued to a hundred pounds. And I've got these torque rods, and I like them. What do you guys think of them? Are they, uh, am I just kidding myself that I'm getting a proper torque out of them? But you can see this one says on it, um, 100 foot-pounds. So I've never really tested the fact that it's 100. Let's take it off and put it back on again. Okay, let's go for a little test run, make sure the brakes are braking, that would be the main thing, but also brake them in a little bit with a couple harsh stops and then some uh, moderate stops. Key to doing this is finding somewhere where uh, you're not going to disturb anybody. People don't like it when you just slam on the brakes. So I'm going to get up to about 40. Do a harsh stop. Do it again. Get up to 40. Another harsh stop. Brakes are grabbing fine. Okay, I'm going to get it up to 50. Do a moderate stop here. And then I'm going to get it up to 50 and come up to a stop sign. and give it a moderate stop here. They seem to work just like they should. I'm not surprised, but you never know. When you work on your own stuff, maybe you break something that you hadn't intended, like stripping off a caliper bolt that I had to replace. Brake pedal feels nice and firm. I think in another video, I'm gonna bleed uh, all of the brakes front and rear. Um, never done it before and it's probably a good time to change the fluid after 188,000 kilometers. 
now the vehicle's had mild use, mild usage, hasn't been uh, ripped through the mountains and we don't live in a hilly area. That being said, with heating up and stuff, they will, um, they will tarnish and break down the brake fluid after a while. Now, I'm not sure of the exact mileage of uh, when I did the front brakes last. However, I'm actually surprised that when I took the brakes apart that um, I wasn't near metal to metal on those pads. It kind of felt like it and I was hearing some funny noises, especially when I went through a parkade. Some kind of slightly uh, scraping noises. But uh, uh, there was still maybe 10 to 20% left on those pads. Uh, so I probably didn't need to do it right away, but uh, you know, for the sake of the channel and everything, I, I did the front brakes. And it just makes me feel better knowing that I've got a full set of pads uh, underneath my foot. Something else would be a good idea to do after this whole front brake situation is to check the fluid. Because we did push fluid back when we uh, compressed the uh, caliper. And it is fine, you know, and again, it does look darker than it probably should, but it's not that bad for uh, 12 years of driving. But I still think it's a good idea to uh, flush it out and maybe that'll be in a future video. Other coming up videos are going to be, I ordered all, all those front end parts for this thing. Um, you really wonder when to stop putting money into a vehicle, but it is cheaper than buying a new one, and if you can get the parts, um, you're probably better off because the price of uh, used and new vehicles is so outrageous these days. So that's it for this video where we did the front brakes on a Jeep Patriot. Probably the same from 2007 up to 2017. Uh, same type of brakes, just make sure you get the right parts for your application, but the process for changing them is similar on this vehicle, and I think there's other Chrysler products that have the same type of brake style as well. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and share, and all that, and uh, if you know other people would like these types of videos where it's DIY stuff around the house or on vehicles, feel free to let them know. And if you want to hear notifications on the next videos that come out, um, don't forget to ring that bell. So that's it for this edition of Mundane Man. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.